then it's going to happen again tomorrow. What are we doing, folks? Are we nuts? Margaret Sanger started a group called Planned Parenthood. The purpose of Planned Parenthood was to eliminate the inferior species. She thought the Jews, Orientals, and blacks were human weeds. We could spend hours on Margaret Sanger. Get our videotape uh, college class, CSC 103, I believe, where we cover this. Um, Par Planned Parenthood published a document in 1952 where they said, what is an abortion? Is it an operation? No, it's not an operation. Is it, uh, what is, plan what is ch child planning, they called it? How to plan your children? Birth control. Is it an abortion? They said, definitely not. An abortion requires an operation. It kills the life of a baby after it has begun. Boy, Planned Parenthood changed their tune in the last 40 years, haven't they? The Bible says, These six things doth the Lord hate, hands that shed innocent blood. Cursed be he that taketh reward that shed innocent blood. And all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. You kids are going to be told in school that your appendix is vestigial. You don't need it anymore. Oh, that's a lie. Your appendix is part of your immune system. You do need your appendix, okay? It's true you can live without your appendix, but you're going to have a greater chance of quite a few diseases. Just because you can live without something doesn't mean you don't need it. You can live without both your legs and both your arms and both your eyes. It doesn't prove you don't need it. This one tells the kids the whale has a vestigial pelvis. It says, many organisms retain traces of their evolutionary history. For example, the whale retains pelvic and leg bones as useless vestiges. What's this talking about? The National Center for Science Education, all four of them working in this little storefront building, call themselves the National Center, you know, big name, little bitty building right there on, in Berkeley, California. They say, Bossy, the cow, evolved to the whale. Really? Wow. I debated Jeannie Scott on the radio for 30 minutes. I got to speak for three of the 30 minutes. I'll be glad to debate her again anytime. She won't do it anymore. But Andrew Carnegie started this group that she's the president of purposely to keep evolution out of schools. That's why they exist. But the cow did not evolve to the whale. This textbook says, the whale has a pelvis that has no purpose. Hmm. They have hind limb bones that have no function. Holt Biology 2001. Just imagine whales walking around. It's true. What are they talking about? They're talking about those little tiny bones right there. Just imagine the whale walking around. <laughs> you know, I tried, and I can't imagine. <laughs> it says, the whale's pelvis has no function. Hmm. The whale's pelvis is evidence of its four-legged, having a four-legged land-dwelling mammal as an ancestor. Oh, come on, this is a lie. Those little bones are part of the whale's reproductive system. Whales are pretty big, you know. That supports different muscles. The whales cannot reproduce without those little bones. It has nothing to do with walking on land. It has to do with getting baby whales. So the guys that are writing this are real, real ignorant about whale anatomy, or they're lying to your kids trying to make them believe a theory. There are no vestigial organs, and if there were, that would be the opposite of evolution. The whale did not evolve from any kind of other animal. It developed, descended from the first whale that God made. You know, the ambulocetus here, only the dark bones were actually found. But they can make up all kinds of stories from a few little bones. We can talk for hours on whale evolution. We cover more of this on our college class or get a hold of me later if you want a whole lot more on the whale evolution. It's just simply baloney. We have in our museum a 15 and a half foot python snake skin. Way down near the south end of that snake, you'll see little tiny claws. There they are, right there, little bitty claws with a little bone inside. Now look what this textbook says. Snakes have rudimentary hind legs. Uh, excuse me, those are not hind legs. Those little claws are used during mating. Snakes don't have any arms, you know. And they can't talk and say, scoot over, honey, okay? It's got nothing to do with walking on land, okay? This has to do with getting baby snakes. Now, these guys ought to quit lying to the kids. This one says, humans have a tailbone that is of no apparent use. I was in a debate with the president of the North Alabama Atheist Association. He got up in front of God and everybody. He said, folks, we got proof for evolution. Humans have a tailbone they no longer need. I said, Mr. Patterson, I taught biology and anatomy. I happen to know there are nine little muscles that attach to the tailbone, without which you cannot perform some valuable functions. I won't tell you what they all are, but trust me, you need those muscles. I said, now, if you believe the tailbone is vestigial, I will pay 
to have yours removed. <laughs> Bend over. <laughs> this textbook says the coccyx, the tailbone, is a small bone at the end of the human vertebral column. It has no present function. And it's thought to be the remainder of bones that once occupied the long tail of a tree-living ancestor. <laughs> they told me when I was a kid, man used to have a tail, but he lost it because he didn't need it. That was the teaching that started me believing in evolution when I was about nine years old. And later I thought, wait a minute, lost it because we didn't need it? Have you ever thought how handy a tail would be? <laughs> have you ever come to the door with two sacks of groceries? Huh? Man, you could open that door right up and walk right in there. You could drive down the highway and hold that can of Coke and tune that radio knob all at the same time. <laughs> Lost it because we didn't need it. Come on. That's a lie. We've been offering a quarter million dollars for a long time for anybody with any real evidence for evolution. If you've got some, show me. But quit lying to the kids. I tell people, those lies ought to be torn out of your book. I was in a debate one time and I mentioned, look, that page ought to be torn out. It's not true. The one professor, when I got done, said, Now, Hoven, I don't think we should deface textbooks. I said, Well, sir, if you were teaching math and you came across a book that said 2 plus 2 is 5, what would you do? He said, Oh, I'd tell my students to mark off the wrong answer and write in the right answer. Oh, you would deface a textbook? I said, Now, sir, if you came across a biology book, and you do teach biology, and the book said the embryo has gill slits, you know it's not true. And it says the tailbone's vestigial, you know that's not true. And the whale's got a vestigial pelvis, you know that's not true. What are you going to tell your students? He said, well, nothing. I said, you're not going to warn them it's not true? You're not going to tell them to tear the page out or you just mark it out? Oh, no, no, no. I said, then you, sir, are a hypocrite. And you got no business using tax dollars to spread these lies in our textbooks to these next generation of kids. You ought to get an honest job picking peaches or changing tires and quit lying to the kids. My humble, unbiased opinion. Everything used to support evolution theory has been proven wrong. I'm sick of paying for the kids to get lied to. Get those lies out of your books. We'll take a quick break, cover some more lies in the textbooks in the next session, and tell you what you can do about it. Thank you so much. Okay, let's continue now with a few more lies in the textbooks that kids have to face every day. The red states on the chart show how the atheists rate the states on how well they teach evolution. Now look, I don't care if you teach evolution or not, just don't use lies to support the theory. And that's all they're doing so far is lying to your kids. Now some people think I should be more politically correct and call it, you know, a misrepresentation, some big word the kids won't understand. I like the word lie. The Bible says they use great plainness of speech. That's real plain, okay, they're lying to your kids. God created the world in six days, the Bible says, very clearly. Textbook says it's over billions of years the world got here. Somebody is clearly wrong. And I like showing them who they are. So that's what we're here for tonight. The Bible says, cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth thee to err from the words of knowledge. The Bible says God created all things, Revelation chapter 4. Heaven is my throne, earth my footstool, God said. Hath not my hand made all these things? The Bible's real clear that God made the world. The Bible says He formed the eye. Charles Darwin said in his book, To suppose that the eye could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd. How can blind chance make a seeing eye? Mm -hmm. <laughs> After saying this, Darwin went on for the next couple of pages to try to explain how he thought it might have happened. Anyway, he still believed it, but he said it was clearly absurd. The back of your eyeball is about one square inch. And yet it contains 137 million light-sensitive cells. How would you like to be the electrician to hook up 137 million connections in one square inch? Uh, my Heavenly Father did. He's pretty smart, ain't he? I got a call from an atheist one time. And they actually did, did a debate on the radio. He said, Hoven, you're dumb. He said, don't you know the eye is an example of poor design? I said, really? He said, yeah, it's wired backwards. He said, the blood vessels are in front of the retina, and the light coming through has to go through the blood vessels to hit the retina, and it blocks out some of the light. He said, the octopus has a much better eye because their blood vessels are behind the retina. I said, well, sir, let me explain a couple things to you. I said, uh, we live in the air. 
air does not block UV light very well. And UV light will destroy your retina. So you have blood vessels in front of your retina to block the UV light. Now, octopus live in the water. 